peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to Potomac Presbyterian Church on this Trinity Sunday when we celebrate the dance of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we think about the meaning of the Trinity. Today we also celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And so now would be an appropriate time to find bread or juice or crackers or something to drink so that you have assembled with you elements to share when we share in that feast together. Today we also say farewell and Godspeed to beloved member David Stump. And so we'll have a chance to send him on um, as he prepares to move to Indiana. Today we'll recognize the high school seniors as they have graduated or prepare to graduate and pray over them blessings, God's blessings on next journeys. And today we especially welcome you if you are a guest, a visitor, a friend, if you have found us on Facebook Live or YouTube and are new to our online worshiping community, welcome. We are honored with your presence uh, this morning. Let's begin our worship rooted and grounded in prayer. Let us pray. O oh, blessed Trinity, in whom we know the maker of all things, seen and unseen, the savior of all, both near and far. By your spirit, enable us to worship your divine mystery and your divine majesty, so that by all the company of heaven, we may magnify your glorious name, saying, holy, holy, holy. Glory to you, O Lord Most High. Amen. Let us be joined together as we share in our responsive call to worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, glory to you forever. Speaker, word, and breath of life, glory to you forever. Lover, beloved, and love itself, glory to you forever. Holy, 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 glory to you forever. Let us sing together our hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the first two verses. Let us join in singing.
Call to confession. Creation displays the glory of God, but our sin keeps us from rejoicing in the love God reveals. Yet Jesus carried our sin to the cross, and the Holy Spirit breathes new life into us so that we can praise God. Let us offer our confession first in silence, and then together let us pray. Let us pray together. God, who is three in one, we confess that we have turned away from you. We gaze upon ourselves as if we are worthy of worship. We take your creation into our hands, not to love, but to use and then to discard. We go to the people of the land, not to serve, but to press them in our service. We do not deserve that you would even notice us, but we pray for mercy because you are merciful. Purify us and transform us into faithful disciples who worship you alone. God, who is Trinity. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear and believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. I'm Dr. Haugen and a member of this church. I also work at Children's Hospital here in Washington, D.C. We thought it would be nice if you and others in the church would send a short note or even a picture to the people at Children's Hospital who help take care of children. Many people are needed to run a hospital, just like it takes many people to run an airport. To keep the airplane safe and flying, you need a crew of flight attendants and pilots, but it also takes many people on the ground to run an airport. For example, someone takes your bags, someone puts gas in the plane, others clean the plane, and some people make sure that all the parts of the plane are working smoothly. Hospitals also need many people to keep them running smoothly. For example, some people have to provide food for the patients and their families and doctors and nurses. Security people keep the hospital safe. Operators take phone calls and help families connect with doctors in different parts of the hospital. Laboratory workers run many tests to make sure that the children are doing well. People clean the hospital and the rooms. Other people repair equipment that may need servicing. These people work out of the way so many families never see them. It would be nice if you and members of your family would send a short note or even a picture to one or more of the hospital workers to thank them for helping to keep Children's Hospital clean, safe, and working smoothly, especially during this very busy time. Letters and cards can be dropped off at the church. I will make sure that they are delivered to Children's Hospital. Thank you very much. Be safe and stay well. As Dr. Haugen describes, the mission committee wanted to provide the PPC family the opportunity to thank employees at Children's Hospital. That can be done by everyone in the church. All ages are, are, are welcome. And so if you have cards at home that say thank you or thinking of you, uh, and you'd like to write a note, whether you wanna sign your name, whether you wanna sign the church's name, uh, or just write a brief message, anything that could be uplifting. You could also, just, someone could design their, their own cards. You can color and draw pictures use glitter, markers, stickers, any, anything is welcome, anything to be uplifting and, and, and as a thank you. Details about this are in the Thursday Spirit if you need any more information. This is also a no postage necessary. We just say, please drop them off at the church. If you're able to do cards but can't get them dropped off at the church, check it out in the Spirit. We'll st- there shows you ways of being able to have us do a pickup to get them so that we can get them to church. Dr. Halvon will drop them off. We're hoping to get all the cards here by June 15th at church uh, so that we can get them down there to the hospital. Let, let PPC shower all the employees of Children's Hospital with our motto of faith, hope, and love. Thank you. As we prepare to hear God's word for us today, let us first come together in prayer. Let us pray. Sing into our ears, Holy Spirit, the word of life. 
tell us who we are and to whom we belong so that we may be able to live with gratitude for all that you have done through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Listen to God's word for the church. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is Trinity Sunday, which we celebrate during the church year, every year, the Sunday after Pentecost. On Trinity Sunday, we lift up the nature and mission of the triune God in identity and purpose. We share as those who are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Both of the Bible passage, passages that Chinere read to us, the one from 2 Corinthians and the one from Matthew, offer Trinitarian blessings. Both passages conclude with words of encouragement and words of promise of God's loving presence. These passages are benedictions, instructions, and blessings to communities of believers who need encouragement, who are desperate for hope, and who need direction. I pray that today we are able to hear these concluding words of encouragement, these concluding words of loving presence, these concluding words of direction from both 2 Corinthians and Matthew as words from our Lord spoken directly to those who are hurting today. Our community is not unlike the Corinthian community. Our community is not unlike those shocked and depleted disciples with whom Jesus spoke at the conclusion of Matthew's Gospel. Recall the epistle from 2 Corinthians. Recall the reading that we heard from Chinere. 
The Apostle Paul writes to a community that needed to be warned about false prophets and apostles among them. What kind of gods are you following, he asks. Who's your leader? Who and what are you worshiping? Paul had to admonish the community to examine themselves and make sure that they were living out faith in Jesus and carrying out deeds of love. Isn't that why you and I return to worship week after week? Don't you and I also need to remember that reminder to live out our faith and to carry out deeds of love? Don't we need to be held accountable? I know I do. Don't you need to be, uh, don't you need to self-examine with confession weekly? I know I do. Repeatedly, Paul encourages and admonishes the Corinthian community, calling upon them to reconcile with one another and offer that correction when needed. Listen again to the Apostle Paul's closing proclamation to the Corinthians. He says, put things in order, agree with one another, live in peace. And when you do these things, the God of love and peace will be with you. Finally, Paul writes, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. From all the letters Paul's written to the Corinthians, in the end, he straightforwardly and simply reiterates the promise of God's ongoing presence with them. And these words are not for the Corinthian community only, but also for us, where we find ourselves today as a community deeply divided, elevating teachers and leaders other than Jesus, fighting rancor, disorder, perhaps not so much in our immediate Potomac community, but in our relationships with other Christians, in our relations with people from other faith traditions, and certainly in race relations in our country. Next, recall the reading from Matthew. In Jesus' final proclamation to the disciples, to the 11 that remain, and to all disciples who listen in, Jesus says, I am with you always. Go, baptize, make disciples, and teach. The mission and commission Jesus gives to his in, in his final words to those he loves is go, make disciples of all. This passage is commonly called the Great Commission or the commissioning of the disciples. And we can divide Jesus' final commission using a Trinitarian formula. First, go. Second, make disciples. And third, of all nations. First, Jesus says go. It's an action word. It's not private. It's not personal. It's an action you can pass along to no one else. You and I have to get up and go. It's not, it, it, it's not a, a question. It's an imperative. One preacher puts it this way. Some must go. Some must let go. Some must help go, but everybody needs to get going. The all too common conceit that religion is a private affair and shouldn't be brought into public life becomes vanity when confronted with the imperative go. There's nothing ambiguous about go. It can't be parsed into a comfortable command. Jesus tells his disciples Take the initiative, go. We've seen a lot of go this week. Go might mean for you and for me, going to your neighbor or someone you know who's wounded 
in mind, body, or spirit, and offering to pray with and for them. Go might mean dropping off food at Elder Marianne Beardall's home for the community it, that Nourish Now supports. Go might mean beginning a hard conversation with someone or with a group of people on the topic of race and reconciliation and how to do that. We have been commissioned to take the initiative, go. Second, in the Trinitarian final commissioning, Jesus says, make disciples. And we don't talk a whole lot about discipling. We might call it mentoring, or we might call it coaching. D G disciples are followers. Disciples are lifelong learners. Disciples represent and live out the values and ethics Jesus teaches. When, when Jesus says, make disciples for us, this may mean taking time to enter into a relationship that's different somehow than a, a friendship or an acquaintance. Making disciples means sharing your personal story of how you came to know Jesus. But first, listening to someone else talk. One first step to opening the door to making disciples might be to commit to reaching out to someone who looks very different from you or me or thinks very different from you or me. And asking that person about him or herself. Ask what it is that brings her joy. Ask what it is that has been heavy on his heart of late. And listen. It seems to me that right now, discipling in the name of Jesus for you and for me means listening to voices and opinions that are very different from our own and listening to voices and opinions that have not gotten a hearing much of late. Making disciples means figuring out how to be vulnerable, how to share that which is most meaningful to you, but first listening to someone who is very different from yourself, speak about what's on him or her, his or her heart. Only disciples can make disciples. So part of making disciples means thinking about the Christian disciplines you and I are engaged in ourselves as followers of Jesus, such as prayer, scripture study, acts of service, and almsgiving. Third, in the Trinitarian final commissioning, Jesus says, of all nations, Jesus commands us to reach out to one and all indiscriminately. All people, all nations are the addressees of disciple making. And one would think that this idea of disciple making with anyone or everyone is self-evident, but it isn't. Interestingly enough, in the parts of the world that used to be the most understanding of the Great Commission in Europe and the USA, we've become uneasy about sharing what's fundamental to us and what's on our hearts and luckily for us Christians from those parts of the world with whom the gospel was shared in centuries past such as Asia and Africa are not so uneasy so our call toward making disciples right now begins with listening 
in what way might God be calling you and me to go make, to go, make disciples of all nations? The Great Commission is terribly difficult. And as participants in a pluralistic democratic society, we might think of religion as yet another social institution that must integrate itself into the larger society and do so harmoniously without making waves. That's not true about a church. A church isn't just another social institution. We're not a club or fraternal organization or a book group. We're not a social service organization or a restaurant. We're not a political action committee. We're not a university, nor even a seminary. There may be times in our life together when we do things that resemble these kinds of social institutions, but that resemblance is fleeting. The church obeys a higher commission than that of societal harmony. It obeys the commission of the one who said in Trinitarian fashion, go make disciples of all nations. Why do this? Why? Because our Lord commands it, but also because it's one way <coughs> to share what is for us a lifeline. And our Lord is with us in it, holding us and our mission in broad, expansive, tender, powerful hands. Before coronavirus and worshiping apart, <clears throat> Walter Props in our congregation said to me one Sunday after worship, why can't we sing songs that we all know in worship? And he said, <coughs> excuse me, he said, I'd like to sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. That's one we all know and we can all sing. And I nodded and I thought to myself, I'm not even sure that's in our hymnal. And then as the virus was sweeping through the world, I heard gorgeous and beautiful renditions of He's Got the Whole World in His Hands online and that music sharing that was all over the internet. And Walter's comments came back to me as the music I was listening to was a reminder of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and you and me and our commission and making disciples and sharing with hurting people about God's sustaining, life-giving presence. And then with the protests and the rallies and the racial divisions becoming so visible and visceral and the pain just right, in, right there before us, it seemed we would all benefit from thinking about and singing about who God's got in his hands. And I don't know who you thought of when the congregation was invited to make up a verse to that song, he's got the whole world in his hands, the little bitty baby, you and me, black and brown brethren, high school seniors who've graduated. I thought of those who are grieving and who've lost loved ones brutally and so painfully most recently. Jesus says in Trinitarian fashion, go make disciples of all. You and I can do this. We've got this. Not because we've got it from our own strength or because we're so clever. We can pursue and follow the Great Commission because he's got the whole world in his hands. Thanks be to God. Amen. He's got
In his hands, he's got our stress and anxiety. In his hands, he's got the people who stand for justice. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the septuagenarians in his hand. He's got the octogenarians in his hand. He's got the nonogenarians in his hand. He's got the whole world in his Let us confess together the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Community life in the time of our pandemic. Though we are worshiping apart from one another, we continue to find ways to gather, be creative, and stay connected. And we now invite you to join our various Zoom events, Potomac Presbyterian Zooms throughout the week. Immediately following worship today, something new. We want you to go immediately from the worship service Look at Chris's invitation. You will find a Zoom invite to an 11 o'clock meeting where we will be electronically fellowshipping together. We will be sermon seminaring together. Who knows, we might even be Bible studying together, but I guarantee to you that it will be an interesting hour. So please join us for the Zoom fellowship hour. And then also for the young people, don't forget 5 p.m. tonight, is your Zoom church youth group, 5 p.m. youth Zoom church group. Other Zoom gatherings this week include Faith, Hope, and Lunch on Monday at 12 noon and Faith, Hope, and Coffee Thursday at 4 p.m. Committee gatherings, these used to be called committee meetings, will meet Monday, June 8th. Check with your committee chair to find out the time and the Zoom ID. Tuesday at 7 p.m. is the Finance Committee Zoom. Zoom. But wait, there's more. We are really taking to Zoom this week. If you want and if you are hearty enough, there is a Wednesday morning men's Bible study at 6.30 a.m., uh, test your mettle and see whether you can be at the Zoom meeting Wednesday at 6.30 a.m. Men's Bible Study. 
And for the rest of us, at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, there is what's called the All Church Bible Study. That Bible study is going to be spending time going through the year of the Bible readings, but also general Bible study, and all are welcome both at 6.30 a.m. and at 10 a.m. And uh, that's for Bible study. If you're interested in church policy, the COVID task force is meeting Thursday evening uh, this coming week at 7 p.m., and all will be welcome to that to talk about when, how, if, and under what circumstances we will be changing some of the formats of our worship services. That's Thursday. Also Thursday for the musicians, the bells Zoom at uh, 7 p.m. and the choir Zooms at 8 p.m. And then finally on Saturday, the Science and Faith group uh, are finishing their book and they will also meet by Zoom 9 o'clock Saturday. And for those, you know who you are. Mary. Now it's time for the morning offering. As we think about the ways that we can return to God a portion of all that has already provided for us, know that there are many opportunities to participate in what God is doing through the Potomac Presbyterian Church. We rely on generous financial donations, gifts, tithes, and offerings and so, even as we are not worshiping in the church sanctuary, you are invited to give financially to Christ's continuing ministry by... If you don't do it practically, you never get it done. So the first way you can donate to the church is by mailing snail mail, snail, snail mail your check to the church, where it says here it will be picked up regularly, but you need the address. So it would be Potomac Presbyterian Church, 10301 River Road, Potomac, Maryland. Repeating, 10301 River Road, Potomac, Maryland. Or by donating online through our secure website at potomacpresbyterian.org, once there, you may give by credit card or set up direct withdrawal permission. We continue our support of Nourish Now, a local organization to alleviate food insecurity in our county. And your donations toward the hunger relief kits consisting of, and listen carefully, non-perishable pantry items may all be dropped off at Elder Marianne Beardall's home in Potomac, Maryland, and then will be delivered to Nourish Now. So just as you needed to know the address of the church, Mary Ann Beardall's address is 10836 Alloway Drive, Potomac, Maryland. Repeating, 10836 Alloway Drive, Potomac, Maryland. Let us give generously as a way of praising our Lord and serving those in need. Please take a moment to reflect on how you are being called to share your gifts. Heavenly Father, we dedicate our gifts to Potomac Presbyterian Church to be used for your good and gracious work in this world. May we experience this coming week the presence of your Holy Spirit in all that we do, and that may this Spirit surround us and help us mediate our ever-changing emotions during the pandemic. Help us to find that transcendent peace that passes all understanding and knowledge, and that brings us the endurance to be able to find and experience the love of God. Amen. Our 2020 high school graduates for whom we pray today and lift up to God, asking for God's care, protection, and provisions are Christian Allery, Matthew Beardall, Megan and Morgan Bedingfield, 
Patsy Kuntz, Chandler Kuhn, Gavin May, Max Pedway, Mike Shively, and Abigail Spencer. Let us pray. Eternal God, in your will our lives are lived, and by your wisdom truth is found. We pray for these graduates who have finished their course of study and who now move on to something new. Remove anxiety or confusion of purpose and give to each one of them the confidence in the future that you have for them. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We also pray for those in our congregation who celebrate their birthday during the month of June. Let us lift to God those with June birthdays. God, cast your loving, wide, open arms around Dan Drumheller, Jim Singerling, Nelda Colligan, Bill King, Allison Smith, Penny Boyd, Mary Hill, Ellen Doctor, Zavin Ayarian, who's celebrating 90 today, Sebastian McFeeders, Stuart Kerr, Nick Mason, Chinri Obasi, Jack White, Jack Tutoria, Jerry Bonaparte, Jean Fissler, Janet Kuntz, Audrey Phillips, Mary Milano, Lindsay Bedingfield, Mike Dagger, Christian Allery, Blake Conway, Maggie Newton, Mackenzie Phillips, Scott Rogers, Owen Goodyear, Danielle Barman, Julie Crater, Megan Liu, Meredith Bond, John Offbacker, Ava Henderson, Allison Sauer, Blake Caswell, Jeff Johnson, Robert Shively, Brad McAuliffe, Millicent Alderman, David Dempsey, Florence Bonaparte, Mary Margaret Smith, and Paul Mammalian. As they celebrate their birthdays this month, may they know your generous spirit, infusing them with life, love, compassion, and care. Through the power of the living God, we pray. Amen. You are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. We come to this table at the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And let us continue in prayer. Holy God, we praise you for your love, bringing order out of chaos, breathing life into dust, leading captives into freedom, consuming false idols with holy fire, calling wandering children home, giving bread to the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, raising the dead to life. Holy God, we praise you for Jesus Christ, word made flesh, light of the world, living water, 
shepherd, gate, way, truth, life, breath. Send your spirit now among us in this bread and in this cup, in your people, one in body, one in blood, one in Christ, one in mission, one in ministry, in this place, in the place where we find ourselves and in this world, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. On the night when our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. He said, Drink of it, all of you. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Alleluia. Amen. And so if you have assembled uh, bread or crackers and fruit of the vine or wine, it's appropriate to um, serve yourself saying the bread of life serve your neighbor, your family member, tearing off a piece and saying the bread of life. Similarly, find the fruit of the vine, juice, water, whatever you've brought to your table to drink and share this feast with your neighbor, with one another, with your family member and say the cup of salvation, Christ's blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. And let us now join in our prayer together as we have been nourished by our Lord, by his very self, thankful for that gift. Let us pray together. Oh God, you have so greatly loved us, long sought us, and mercifully redeemed us. Give us grace that in everything, we may yield ourselves, our will, and our work as a continual thank offering to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dave, your magnificent gift will help music be made here for many years after you've left us. Thanks for the gift. We'll play a little bit. Hello, Dave. We hope your move to Indiana goes smoothly. We'll miss you at PPC. Thanks for all your contributions to the church, especially in the session and the PSCCF. Thank you for all your hard work and your leadership with the personnel committee. Best wishes on your move and on starting the next chapter of your life with family, you will be missed. 
We envy you, however, that you are going to be near your granddaughters and able to see them frequently. They were the light of Carolyn's life, and I know they are of yours. We very much will miss you and appreciate all of your contributions to Generosity Committee session and particularly your uh, leadership as personnel chair. Dave, we are grateful for our friendship and I am reminded of the many wonderful conversations I had with Carolyn. Enjoy spending time with Minna and Maxine. They are such treasures. Godspeed, Dave. I want to wish you well and Godspeed. Uh, best wishes on your relocation. Uh, I understand the motivation completely, having been in your shoes before, and uh, we'll really miss your contributions around here and your uh, uh, friendly banter, and we uh, hope that you'll keep in touch with us. Dave, both of us say it's been great to work with you on session. And wonderful talking to you and getting to know you at our time at PPC, and best, best wishes, wishes on your, your move back home. I would like to thank you for the leadership that you have provided the Potomac Presbyterian Church. And I'd like to thank you for all the discussion in the PASTCF. I want to wish you well in your new adventures in Indianapolis. And I think they're very lucky to get you. Dave, we just wanted to take this opportunity to say goodbye. And for the event, I'm sporting the Dave Stump tribute beard. But Dave, seriously, it's been great getting to know you over the last 20 years. And you've been a wonderful friend and mentor both personally, professionally, and spiritually. I've enjoyed working with you on the session, the personnel committee, our Dine with Nines, our Orphan Easter. We will miss you coming over to our home and sharing meals and conversation. And I wish you all the best as you move forward to the next stage of your life. And Dave, while you will be missed here, we will be thinking of you spending time with your family, cheering on your beloved Hoosiers and Colts when you are back, back home, home again, again in, in Indiana. Indiana. I wish you the best, David, as you move westward to be closer to your daughter. I have certainly enjoyed the relationship that we've had over the past many years as we've intersected our faith together as well as our participation in different groups such as the science and religion group Bon Voyage. And best of luck as you continue your journey of life uh, with your daughter and her family uh, in the Midwest. Uh, my best to you and God bless you. You have left your mark here, David. You and I got to know each other by serving as elders together and more specifically on the personnel committee. You led our committee as its chair during an interim period, which can be an interesting and challenging time in any church, and this was no different for us. Your leadership during that period was steadfast and respectful. Three words come to mind when I think of you, deliberate, insightful, and thoughtful. You are truly a gentleman and a gentle soul. As you embark on this next chapter, I hope you find a faith community in your new home that feels just like a home. Thank you, Dave. The Lord now sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live. The Lord now sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live. The angels are not sent into our world of pain to do what we were meant to do in Jesus' name. That falls to you and me and all who are made free. Help us, O Lord, we pray to do your will today. The
charge we receive as we go out into the day is from Jesus' great commission. Go make disciples of all nations. And our benediction is from the Apostle Paul. Finally, brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen, agree with one another, live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit surround you, envelop you, and be with you and go with you now, into the day, into the week, into the world, and always. Alleluia. Amen.